This guy in an urban area drives basically for free. He has a lot of solar and an electrolyzer in his garage with a fueling nozzle to fill his car. And whenever there is solar energy, he produces hydrogen in the storage in his backyard. But let's talk about safety and explosions because hydrogen is an explosive gas. So there are different safety zones. One safety zone you see at the top left is the storage area. There's first safety zone one meter around the area and second safety zone two meters around the area. The pipe connecting the storage to the electrolyzer itself has no hazard. But if we look to the right of this picture, there is the section view of the garage and we see the electrolyzer is standing on the ground and there's uh, the explosion zone one around this electrolyzer and there's the explosion zone two, which is ac actually the room. So first of all, we don't want a leakage and second, we don't want ignition because there's oxygen around, so it could be an explosive gas. There's an integrated H2 sensor in the electrolyzer itself, which gives a warning to the management system. The management system then cuts off the power to the electrolyzer so that no more hydrogen is produced. If somehow this system fails in the room, the explosion zone 2, there are two other hydrogen sensors. One is connected to grid power and it's a very fine one, so it can measure low potential percentages it will give an acoustic warning and there is an emergency switch next to the electrolyzer if somehow there's a blackout there's a second hydrogen sensor at the ceiling of the room this one only alerts when there's a high concentration and then the person who hears the signal has to push the emergency off button very quick. Of course, the room is wet ventilated, so that it is not very likely to have an explosion. Also, lights and switches have to have an ATEX certificate. So that's how we make hydrogen handling pretty safe. But first of all, we have to get the machines safe. So there are two ways to measure leakages in the first term. That is one a so-called hydrogen snooper, which has a tip and a display. And if there's any hydrogen at the tip, the display shows the parts per million of hydrogen you can estimate. First of all, we make just a time test. So we pressurize the system and look how much pressure is lost in 24 hours. If this test passes, there are no big leakages. If not, we have to look for the leakages with the hydrogen snooper. That's what we do right here. First, we blow air in the box to exchange any gas mixtures. Then the snooper alerts and we approximately know where the hydrogen leakage comes from. Then you can also use some kind of soapy water to make a soap around the fitting and to see it bubbling. But I have very bad experience with this soap because you can only detect very big leakages with this method. So the hydrogen snooper is a perfect method, but with 3,000 or more than 3,000 euro, it is a big investment not everybody can afford. That is why now we will talk about cheap sensors, which everybody can afford, which do their job, and that we know by testing them. Enjoy the footage. If we work with hydrogen, it's all about safety. So we tested different affordable measurement systems and uh, now we're gonna test this carbon monoxide tester, which is meant for uh, combustions or burning processes to warn humans uh, of this poisonous gas. Mostly they have a heated wire and they measure the surrounding heat resistance. We have here, this is a test gas, it's 0.1% hydrogen and air. So we simulate a room where 0.1% of hydrogen goes up 
to the ceiling while we spray this to the recipient. 55 ppm, maybe that's a little retarded. So I don't think it will measure or give out a warning with 0.1% of hydrogen, which, which is a non-flammable mixture, so there's no need of danger. Here, this metal hydride storage. It's bloody heavy. It's filled with metal powders. There's not much pressure coming out of this, but it is pure hydrogen, though. So it's still at no, 20, uh, 22 per parts per million right now. So I'm not going to open this valve and let the hydrogen go into the sensor. And yes, we see it is giving out a warning. This is a dangerous concentration. So this can be used for higher percentage of hydrogen, but obviously not for low percentage. We have another thing on the test. This is going to alarm for, I think, five minutes. So thank you very much for your interest.